Hi everyone and welcome to another video. If this is the first time you're seeing me, I'm the Hermit Tarot and this is my YouTube channel. I have been saying that intro for a very long time, so apologies if I said it very fast. Um, <laughs> it's literally just like broken record at this stage, but welcome everybody. Thank you all for being here. In today's reading, we're going to be asking Spirit for predictions and information on what could be happening before the end of 2024. So right here on YouTube, I'm going to be leaving the reading up to Spirit. It's going to be Spirit's choice about what we talk about and about what comes through, what urgent messages you need to hear about the end of your 2024 year just to make it rhyme I guess um, and then in the extended reading I'm going to do a full breakdown of your relationships your money your home life your family your friends and you so the extended reading is going to offer us a little bit more time but the reading right here on YouTube is intended to be able to give you access to those messages without you having to Extend it on if you don't want to. The extended reading is a wonderful way to support the channel, to support this community, and just to make sure I am still here to do what I do. But really, to get there, we do have to start here. As you can see, I don't have any groups in front of me, so I'm going to shuffle some cards out. I'm going to allocate crystals to each of the groups, and when you know which of these groups you're feeling most drawn to, you will click on the timestamp in the description box or in the pinned comment, and that will take you to your reading. So sweet souls, I'm doing this reading right before I go on holidays. So you will be seeing this while I'm probably in the middle of Germany, probably. I think I'll be in Amsterdam when you see this reading. So hopefully, it found you exactly when it was meant to. Spirit, tune me into the energy of the collective. Which of these cards contains the most honest messages for my group ones about their 2024, the rest of 2024 for group one? Group one, you have Gemini. Which of these cards contains the most honest messages for my group twos about the rest of 2024 for group two? We have Ceres for group two. What about group three, please, Spirit? Which of these cards contains the most honest messages for group three? We have Waxing Crescent Moon in group four, please, Spirit. Which of these cards contains the most honest messages for group four? Y'all have Venus. So I'm going to allocate crystals to each of the groups now. Okay, so we have crystals on each of the groups now. With group one over here, you guys have this Chrysoprase crystal. Actually, I'm just going to double check that this is Chrysoprase. Okay, lucky I checked. I don't think it's Blue Howlite. It's actually Chrysocola. So group one, you have the Gemini card and the tumbled Chrysocola crystal right here. Group two, you have Ceres which is an asteroid, and you also have aquamarine. Now in the past I called this jade, but I looked into it properly, and although it does resemble um, very similar qualities to jade, it's definitely an aquamarine crystal that's been tumbled. So if you feel drawn towards this card or this crystal, you'll be a part of group two's reading. Group three, you have the Waxing Crescent Moon, and you also have the Somoki Quartz Crystal that's been very well tumbled. Group four, you have the Venus card with this beautiful, I want to say some form of lace agate, this fiery, beautiful crystal, who I'm also very terrible at identifying. But the colors do correspond to one another. So if you're drawn towards the crystals or the cards, you will be receiving messages in those equivalent groups. Now, I don't think you should have messages in more than one group unless you feel really pulled towards them. Because I'm not doing a reading on other people, I'm doing a reading on you. I would really encourage you to practice discernment here. Make sure that you are taking time to select a group and really going for the group that feels as though it's 
the most intense in terms of drawing you towards it. If you have other methods of choosing a group, by all means, fall back on those methods, trust those methods, but ultimately use your discernment to make sure that you're selecting a group that contains the most honest messages for you. When you know where to go, click on your timestamps. As I said, pinned comment or description box is where the timestamps are and join me in your reading. So the first thing I want you to do with me is to take in two deep mindful breaths. Breathe in, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four. And in, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four. Now I want you to focus on clearing your mind. It's natural to have thoughts racing at this point. I want you to embrace each thought as it comes and let it slip as quickly as it came in. Focus on clearing and balancing out these thoughts so that they come and go without a desire to be attached to them. And now, with a rested mind, I want you to think of the first group that comes to your mind. It may be a number, it may be an object that I showed you, it could be a specific colour, it could be a feeling that you felt when I showed you each of the groups today. When you are ready, and when you feel confident, select your group and join me in your reading. Welcome my group ones to your reading. If you chose this Gemini card or the Chrysocola crystal, then this is going to be your reading. Welcome in. This is from the last reading, so if you haven't seen that yet, I highly recommend you go check it out. That may not be your group though. I'm going to put that crystal out of the way and we're going to supplement some of these empty spaces with your energy. This is an unpolished Amazonite and it is usually the crystal that I would put with Gemini. But in this case, I wanted something smaller so I chose Chrysocola. Your Gemini energy being here is no coincidence, as you saw if you watched the intro. I did shuffle this card with intention. Group one, we're asking spirit what is happening for you before the end of 2024. And for Gemini to come out, I can see that for all of you, there is an importance here on a relationship in your life becoming closer. You and this person will be spending a lot of time together. There will be a lot of moments exchanged so that you can deepen your mutual interests. If you're a technology person, and you probably are if you found me on YouTube, um, I see you sending each other reels or TikToks or shorts, whatever it is that you prefer. There's a lot of short exchanges here, lighthearted exchanges. It seems that your main theme before the end of 2024 is about pushing your socialization, making sure that you're keeping communication open and making sure you're incorporating community into the things that you're interested in doing. There is a strong energy here of you having company. I really don't think there'll be a lot of time spent alone. So I do want to have a look at the nature of this relationship but I am picking up that this Gemini energy is somebody really interested in spending a lot of time with you, getting to know you, understanding you, and just being able to relate to you in some capacity. For a lot of you, this Gemini energy is representing a sibling. The third house does talk about siblings and friends, but I do want to break that down even further and have a little bit of a better look so spirit, what is this Gemini energy about? Who is wanting to get closer to my group once before the end of 2024? Who is wanting to get closer to my group once before the end of 2024? 
I'm using the Lucid Minds Tarot deck for you. We have the Nine of Pentacles coming out first. I got this deck from Tarot Stack. I do have an affiliate link in the description box if you would like to have a look at what else they have. We have Seven of Pentacles reverse, Two Pentacles cards. Who is this person that wants to get closer to my group ones, please, Spirit? The Two of Cups upright. And your bottom deck energy is the Six of Cups reverse. This is somebody who's already in your life. This is not a new person. This is an existing connection that is trying to re-spark. So you and this person may have not had a lot of time together, either because you weren't prioritizing each other. Oops, sorry. Or it's actually because with the Two of Cups and the Six of Cups here, you just didn't have that opportunity to kind of develop things until now. I do think that for some of you, there was a period where you walked away, but it's not showing an ending. It's just showing, you know, I had to focus on other things. Spirit, is this a romantic connection or a platonic connection? Dang, that's not really satisfying. Three of cups reversed. I don't feel satisfied. What is this? A platonic or romantic death card reverse? It's somebody that you have love for. It's somebody that you have love for. The three of cups reverse could be both, to be honest. Like upright, I would say friend. Reversed, I would say that this is someone who wants to get to know you better. So for some of you, this is a friend who's going to become a very close, close person. Instead of them just being an acquaintance or on the outskirts, they're really taking time to get to know you better and to be a close confidant. Whereas for others of you, this is about deepening the friendship within an existing connection so that you feel like you're on the same page about things moving forward. I can see how this could be romance as well. So I just want to cover both bases. Unfortunately, this is a general reading, so I've just got to do what I can. So let's have a look at how you can identify who this person is. We know that they're already in your life. Spirit's also saying that this is going to be somebody who really wants to spend a lot of time with you. So they could be clingy at times with the nine of pentacles reversed. They may want to kind of do a lot of things with you. They may struggle with spending time alone. I also think with the seven of pentacles reversed, this is someone who feels like they have to make up for time. So they may have been away or they may have, you know, been distracted by other things. Their circumstances may have recently changed with the seven of pentacles reversed to where suddenly they have a lot more free time. They changed jobs, they changed locations, they changed their relationship status, whatever it is. It feels like they're making up for lost time with you and they almost feel rushed regardless of how much time you spend with this person they still feel like they can't get enough of you by the end of the year you guys might be feeling like you and this person are a bit codependent because you spend so much time together you're going to have plans interlocked this person's going to want to build something with you or create something with you they're going to make a plan to travel somewhere with you or to kind of do something that you both have to work towards together it could even start as like a health or fitness goal with the nine of pentacles reversed your lifestyles merging in that way but i think that a lot of different aspects of your life can be linked back to this person so how will my group ones recognize this person's spirit we have the princess of swords so they're likely younger than you they're either your age or they will be younger how will my group ones recognize this person ace of swords reversed they're not the best at communicating unfortunately they seem to be more confident in the um digital age so they may respond to reels before they respond to text messages. They probably don't like phone calls, you know? They probably wanna use a social media app instead of their phone's inbox to message you. Um, they're coming across as a younger sibling for a lot of you. Otherwise, they are somebody who seems to be hard to kind of get a hold of. They do seem to get easily distracted. I don't think that they have bad intentions, but I just think that this is someone who you have to follow up with. They may forget to reply to messages and then they're like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. 
you know, I, I didn't see that message there. I was on my phone all day and I just didn't see that message there. Temperance reversed. You're currently not as close to this person as you could be. They could also be a, they could have Gemini influences or Capricorn or Scorpio. We also have Sagittarius on that card. King of Pentacles coming out and the Ten of Wands, more Sagittarius energy. Aries and Taurus on that King of Pentacles as well. So the thing is, how will you recognize this person? Honestly, I can see why they always feel like they are making up for things with you because they, it's hard to kind of make plans with this person. There seems to be time behind your connection with them. You have a lot of grace. You give them a lot of grace, understanding and compassion. This person means well, they care deeply but they just don't seem to have their shit together. Sorry, YouTube, and sorry for those who are listening and don't like swearing. They aren't the best at organizing things. They're not good at making plans, and they often feel overwhelmed by the amount of responsibility that they have. This is somebody who has pretty solid intentions. They have a lot of love for you. They care about you. And they're genuinely interested in spending more time with you. They just don't seem to be that great at following through with messages. If you can make a plan in person, that's even better. If you can get this person over the phone and tell them to put that plan in their calendar, that's even better. It does remind me of like ADHD. I don't want to diagnose. I never, you know, want to assume those things, but that's what it's kind of reminding me of. And that's why I think that this person has really good intentions. They just struggle with the follow through, the execution of the plans. How else you can identify this person? I think that they have a really fun side to them that comes across as very excitable to other people. But because you know them very well, you know that that fun side is also the side of them that gets overwhelmed by the amount of tasks they have, the amount of responsibility they feel. And they kind of come to you to blow off steam and to help them kind of get things back on track. They feel like you help them get things back on track. You help them stay focused or you help them feel more grounded. They feel like they come to you because you help their brain work. You also inspire them. This is someone who kind of looks up to you. So even if they are age-wise older, there is a youthful curiosity about this person's mind. They pick up a lot of interests and hobbies quite easily, but they may be, you know, the jack of all trades, a master of none, somebody who has a lot of different things going on at once. I think that this person is a lot of fun to talk to. People might think they're very witty and funny. They could even come across as um, charming at times, but they're by no means put together. They do kind of have this sort of haphazard feeling about them where they're just an amalgamation of different things kind of smashed together. Because of that, I think they're very personable. I think a lot of people like this person and can enjoy their company. I also think that the two of you will have a very close bond. I don't think that this is somebody who has a lot of close friends. They probably have a lot of acquaintances. A lot of people are curious about this person. A lot of people know of this person, but you're one of their only people in their close circle. They probably need a lot of downtime. They like to disappear. When they feel overwhelmed and flustered, they really need space to regulate and to just deal with the overwhelming energy that they've taken on. They also probably enjoy traveling, but they probably don't get to travel as much as they want to because the whole idea of planning a trip is quite overwhelming. I think that this is somebody who with the King of Pentacles is proud of whatever career they have, whatever way that they make their money, or they have a pretty solid idea of what would make them proud. So they could be coming to you to get help about their finances or their career or just their lifestyle in general, because they seem to be convinced that you're going to help them embrace their best qualities and get a more, more of a structure around themselves, more of a routine around themselves and there is a lot of love here that's how you can recognize this person i did talk about zodiac signs before but i also think that the months of november and december are going to be very significant for the two of you 
I think that you guys will be having some sort of breaking point moment in October where this person's going to really rely on you and it could be a lot for you. But by the time Sagittarius and Capricorn season are in effect, there will be more harmony in this connection. I think that there could be a lot of back and forth communication in the next couple of months where you're still kind of revisiting your relationship to one another and trying to kind of work out how you fit in each other's lives. Um, and then by the end of the year, there's this strong sense of a bond between the two of you. So that is that person. I'm going to pack this up and I want to look at what else you can expect to happen with this Gemini energy before the end of 2024. Spirit, what else can my group ones expect with this Gemini energy? What else can my group ones expect with this Gemini energy, please, Spirit? Can my group ones expect? We have the six of cups. Yeah, I just see a lot of love around you, group ones. This isn't the only person who wants to spend time with you. You guys have multiple loved ones really wanting to spend quality time with you. I also think that there could be the birth of a child happening before the end of the year. And this moment could be a wonderful opportunity to bring a lot of loved ones together, to celebrate new life, and to also reflect on past memories, to strengthen existing connections and strengthen existing bonds. There seems to be a wonderful appreciation for the connections you have in your life before the end of the year that it seems to come out of of a specific moment which feels like a birth but if it isn't a birth it's like a celebration or a birthday or remembering somebody that you all really love what else is this gemini energy about we have the four of pentacles so this is specifically making me think of your finances i think before the end of the year you guys are going to be starting you're going to have some sort of financial goal that you'll be working towards or you'll be putting yourself on a budget and you'll have to be very i'm hearing cruel so okay maybe you haven't <laughs> that's a bit extreme <laughs> um but you're going to be very strict with the four of pentacles. This is Capricorn energy of having to be very strict, practical, pragmatic, and just planning. You're planning for something. That's why we're doing this. We're doing this because we're planning for some sort of financial goal or some sort of lifestyle achievement. So we're putting money aside. We're reining in our spending habits. We're working with a realistic budget by being more aware of what we're spending in general and what we're making. You guys don't want to be working more than you already are. So you're going to be stricter on what you spend um, in order to make sure that you're prepared for this goal. I'm honestly seeing this be, I, I can see this being achievable. If you keep your head down and you stay focused before the end of the year, you're going to be making progress here towards a financial goal with savings. What else can you tell us? We have the seven of wands reversed and we have the four of wands upright. So two fours over here. The number four could be significant. At the back of the deck is a six, the six of swords. Okay, sorry to pivot, but that Six of Swords has a message. So in this deck, we see this purple, or it's not purple, sorry. It looks pink to me. I don't know how it shows up on camera. But we see this sort of pinkish orangey hue around this vessel, this boat. And I feel like this is an energy of optimism, to be fair. I think that the goal towards the end of this year is about being able to make the right choices because you guys seem to be wanting positive movement, positive growth. I don't think that you're trying to control everything here. I'm hearing any more. There's a level of acceptance behind this card. You guys are making peace with your situation, especially if other people's actions have really frustrated you. 
at the start of this year, if you guys have felt like you've had to deal with the collateral of other people's choices, other people's judgment, other people's lack of awareness or compassion or understanding, or if you feel like you're constantly cleaning up other people's mistakes, I think that the rest of this year is just about you focusing on yourself, your small group of loved ones, and just trying to make some positive actions to move forward. I see you choosing peace. Before the end of the year, you guys will be having a very healing conversation with a loved one. This is either a sibling or a family member or someone you've known for a very long time, since birth, some of you. This conversation is about the two of you being able to clear the air. You will achieve peace, but you will also have to be honest in this conversation about where you stand and about what you want moving forward. I see boundaries being established here in this conversation. And the goal behind these boundaries is to make sure that you're both respecting each other's peace moving forward. But this conversation opens the doors so that you can kind of invite the other person back into your, into your life. Communication is honestly a very big deal Before the end of 2024, you guys will be having some pretty big healing conversations with some key people in your life to really make sure that the right people are in your life before the end of 2024. You want to finish the year feeling like you're surrounded by the right people, the right support team. And I can see here with this seven of wands reversed, We're doing what we can to make sure that we don't let pride stand in our way. You guys aren't forcing anything. You're not trying to be the bigger person, but you're also not trying to kind of let your ego interfere with any reconciliation or closeness you could feel. I think with the seven of wands reverse, there's a situation here in which you're no longer the underdog. You're not playing the game. You're not forcing things to happen. You're not making that out to be a big deal. And it might not have even been you making this challenging. It almost feels like somebody else was projecting that expectation onto you. You may have felt like you had to compete. I honestly think that this is a sign that the rest of your year is about being very selective over how you invest your energy I'm hearing choose your battles. You guys are being very, very careful about how you, I want to say engage with people, but that to me makes me think that there could be a lot happening around you, sweet souls. I see a lot of peace in your energy. So people around you could be kind of doing things or saying things that are quite problematic for lack of a better word which is inspiring you to want to just buckle down. I'm hearing keep your head between your knees. So some of y'all are literally like, I'm not a part of this. I'm not even here. I'm not even present in this situation. (laughs) Like, leave me out of it. Choose your battles wisely. There could be some sort of conflict happening in a family setting or in a friendship setting, which could also be a workplace setting if, if you have close with your workmates. Um, but there is like an emotional attachment to the people involved in this dispute. Despite you having feelings and opinions, you're removing yourself from that conflict. You're like, I'm not going to engage in this. I don't want to be a part of this fight. So that's really powerful. And I feel like your spiritual team is going to be so proud of you for making that decision, for choosing peace, not problems. (laughs) With the four of pentacles and the four of wands, all of these four energies are promoting this idea of peace, stability, safety, security. You guys are definitely spending a lot more time in the house towards the end of the year. I don't know which hemisphere you're from. Maybe comment down below if you got time, if you want to do that. But I really think that regardless of whatever holidays are happening, whatever birthdays or celebrations there are, You're being very home-based. You're nesting. You're spending a lot of time focusing on the bare minimum, 
which actually feels right. In this group, it feels like you're playing catch up from the start of the year or from the end of last year. You're just focusing on making sure that you have a safe place for yourself, making sure that your home is safe and clean, making sure that your budget is something that you're actively aware of, you don't wanna overspend. And you're trying to also make sure that you're in this energy so that you're setting yourself up for future success. You guys may be making compromises or sacrifices towards the end of the year to ensure that whatever plans you have for 2025, money is not going to be the issue, right? Not having enough time and energy is not going to be the issue. You guys are going to end this year feeling rested, feeling safe, feeling like you're on track with your money goals and also feeling like your peace is fully thriving. It's restored. There could be a wedding and a birth this year, which are pretty big highlights. They have a very big impact on you. They make you want to be more careful about the relationships in your life and about who you're giving your time and your energy to recognizing the support that you have and the important people in your life makes you feel very sentimental and it also makes you feel very focused you guys don't have a lot of energy to waste sorry just wiping my nose quickly so you're being very very careful and honestly i can't fault this energy it feels really wholesome it feels needed it feels like you guys are just have a big blanket wrapped around you and you know there's a fireplace and it's cold outside but you're drinking a warm drink and you're watching your favorite thing on tv or on an ipad even there's a real intimacy about this energy and you feel safe and you feel protected and you feel loved and you're not out here chasing you know adventure but you are feeling exactly where you need to be I feel like a lot of your movement may happen next year or you've just reached a point in your journey where you're not wanting any of that. You know, <laughs> like you don't need that excitement anymore, that spontaneity anymore. And that's what's coming through for you, sweet souls. So I, I don't know how to wrap up this reading. Let's see. Spirit, is there any helpful advice that these sweet souls may need to know? before the end of the year before the end of 2024 i'm just going to close this a little bit that might help my camera as beautiful as the light is it also causes issues with the digital device so let's do that for now spirit what advice do you have for my group ones what advice do they need to hear to help them finish this year strong? We have Amber and we have Lapis Lazuli. At the back of the deck is Aquamarine, which I used in my last, oh no, this reading. <laughs> this reading, oh my gosh, the readings are blurring. Okay, sweet souls, let's get some more information about these chords. I watched Cat in the Hat recently last night that's how recent <laughs> but um i don't know if you guys have seen cat in the hat the mike myers version but um i'm hearing that line how'd you get so smart honestly that feels like your spiritual team they're very proud of you they're very impressed the way that you finish this energy is a beautiful mixture of stoicism and intuitive thinking you're doing what feels right for you and you're learning how to navigate some pretty intense energies. You may have some pretty big personalities around you. Some sort of dramatic moments will be happening. And instead of choosing a side and trying to be the peacemaker or trying to fight other people's battles, you're going, I'm not a part of this. Love you, but I can't support this. <laughs> I'm stepping out. So let's have a look at these cards, shall we? If we have a look at Lapis Lazuli first, Spirit wants us to focus on this card. 
Down the bottom here, we have the warrior pose, which stretches and reinforces your shoulders, arms, and the muscles of your back. Also on this card, we have Vishuddha, the throat chakra. We've got Mercury's symbol here, and we have the number 28. The element associated with this card is water. Now, this card is a message of friendship. And it reminds us that friendship, like love, is an inexhaustible source of richness and well-being. In this period, we manage to really get close to others in a sincere and open manner, attracting their sympathy and friendship. Relationships that are created now are long-term and deep, based on mental affinities and heartfelt communication. Sweet soul, that's exactly what I was feeling with Gemini. The power behind this card and the crystal on this card is that it is very calming and it can help keep our anger under control. It helps us to rationalize our strong emotions and on one adverse side, it can also indicate menstrual problems according to the guidebook. So I feel like this card as advice is here to really like talk about all those themes I was bringing up about the relationships in your life, about the amount of patience that you have for that person that really wants to be close to you. There is a lot of compassion here towards somebody who's genuinely interested in being a person that is there to support you and be in your life for a long time. And even though there seems to be a period towards the end of the year where they need a lot of your support, they pay you back tenfold. Once this person has dealt with their stuff with your support, they are there ready to support you and to be a strong part of your security, your foundation. I honestly think that this person could even be living with you before the end of the year. Well, the two of you will be so intertwined in each other's lives that you're making a decision to kind of merge your lifestyles closer together, maybe to save money or to just support each other's goals. There seems to be a relationship in your life that's really getting closer because of challenges and because of your strong communication in being able to troubleshoot those challenges together. So let's have a look at Amber next as advice. So down the bottom here, we have the bridge pose. And the element, obviously, of this card is fire. Amber is also in this deck associated with the Manipura chakra, which is your solar plexus. And we have the number 21 and Leo. This energy in terms of the bridge pose is about strengthening your neck, your chest and your spinal column. The message behind the card is that right now our sunny nature is at its maximum potential. We feel full of energy and we have the strength to commit ourselves to large and difficult undertakings. This is not the moment to stand idle. It is best that we act perhaps in a group where we manage to attain a leadership position naturally. Others trust us and we do not delude them. The powers behind this crystal is that amber improves and protects our health in general, loads us with vitality and helps us to socialize. It is optimal for those who are shy and for situations where we must speak in public. You guys may need to obtain some amber um, because I think that this is going to really help you with your relationships and with you navigating some of these challenges towards the end of the year, whether you're dealing with big personalities or whether you're just having to navigate some situations where it's about choosing your battles, you know, and overcoming these challenges with creativity and compassion instead of arcing up out of defense. So <clears throat> as advice, this amber crystal is reminding you that under pressure, you do seem to be able to cope really well. I think that there is a natural instinct here that will take over you. I think that the rest of the year is about you assuming leadership position in this connection, as well as in your own lifestyle to ensure that you're making the right choices for yourself and to ensure that you're setting the right boundaries for other people. 
you guys are going to be encouraged to stay connected to those who are important to you. I'm not seeing you spending time alone. I see you being in a supportive group setting with at least one very important person in your life, let alone multiple people who seem to be re very respectful and understanding of what you're working towards. This amber energy is definitely an energy of confidence and I think that your advice as you end the year is to stand confidently when you're having to either communicate what you want or make decisions about the things that you want to invest your energy into. I hope that this was a helpful reading for you, sweet soul. I'm going to leave your YouTube reading here and we're going to go into your extended now where we will do a full breakdown. I have a little spread that I want to do for you guys. In your extended reading, we're going to get cards for your relationships, for your money situation, for your home life, your family, your friends, and you. And we're going to get a full breakdown of what is happening to you before the end of 2024. If you want that in-depth breakdown, and especially if the first part of your reading has resonated, the link to your extended reading is in the description box and the pinned comment. Please be aware that that link does take you to my website where I host many different extended readings. So you do need to make sure that you click on the right reading. Your group one, holy moly, nearly did the wrong thing then. Your group one of the before the end of 2024 reading that I posted in June 2024. <laughs> so thank you, sweet souls, for all your time, your energy and your support right here on YouTube. If this is where we're parting ways, I wish you peace, prosperity, abundance, happiness, health, wealth, success and joy on your journey ahead. Until we meet again. Bye. and welcome to your reading if you chose the Ceres card here or this aquamarine crystal then this is going to be your reading welcome sweet souls now we're asking spirit what is happening for you before the end of 2024 this is going to be a pretty in-depth reading group one's reading was pretty detailed right here on youtube but i will be offering an extended reading to get into a full breakdown as well so if the youtube reading does resonate and you feel like this is your group the extended reading can offer further clarity by getting into specific aspects of your life where i will do a six card spread clarifying when necessary to identify opportunities and challenges in each of those aspects of your life but we'll talk more about that at the end we're going to start by having a look at your service card right here now i say all of these names very peculiarly um i don't really i don't really follow the traditional greek or roman pronunciation and I think I need to educate myself a little bit better on how to do that because I don't want to offend anybody so I want to get that disclaimer out of the way um, now this is an asteroid and the thing about the energy of Ceres is we see this glyph down here that is a scythe so the whole point of this asteroid is to highlight aspects of your natal chart where you may be harvesting or nurturing um, different situations. So the way that it's coming through for you specifically, I'm butchering the overall analogy because I'm already getting messages about you. I feel like your biggest theme before the end of this year is to focus on that aspect of nurturing and gaining a sense of growth. Now, the thing about this card is not only have we seen growth, but we're harvesting that growth. You guys are going to have the opportunity to be rewarded for an aspect of your life. I'm actually hearing multiple aspects. So we're going to have to clarify which areas of your life that are ready to harvest because your hard work, your effort, and all of the things that you've been growing are coming into fruition. There is a lot of energy here around heart chakra activation, but I'm also seeing finances popping off. This green is making me think of money and I'm Australian. We don't have, actually we do have green money. Our green money is the $100 bill. So that's interesting. 
Now, the thing is, this card is coming through with a lot of different messages. So I'm going to start writing down some things for you guys that I think you need to know. Things that might resonate for you. I'm just writing at the bottom of this piece of paper while it's fresh. I feel an energy here of nurture. Spirit is telling me that you guys will be nurturing a relationship in your life. And there's something very wholesome about this. It feels platonic. If it is a love interest, there's a platonic aspect here to wanting things to strengthen and deepen some of you guys will be expecting news of a pregnancy before the end of the year i don't think the baby will be born this year but there is a pregnancy before the end of this year and that's that platonic love of nurture coming through i am seeing a financial situation here where you may need to be a bit more aware i'm hearing be more aware of where your money is going. Once you're more aware of where your money is going, I'm scrolling to help myself understand the messages, you guys. It's not gonna be clear for you, um, but this sometimes helps when I have a lot of messages coming through. It helps me to focus. So be more aware of where your money is going so that you can kind of control how to maximize your profits. There is an energy here of a self-sustainable model of growth with your finances. So if you are self-employed, this would make a lot more sense. If you're not self-employed, I think there is a way for you to use the money you're making from your job to be able to grow it independently. And I think that you guys are figuring out some sort of financial model before the end of the year to be able to give you growth so this is probably something that's worth talking to a financial advisor about or it's an idea that you've already had that you need to implement before the end of the year because you are going to see growth there is an energy here of investments strategies and growth if this is pertaining towards a business the main message that i'm getting is that you're learning how to cut back expenses that are unnecessary so that you can maximize profits but you need to be more aware of where your money is going in order to do that there's a smarter way for your income to flow through your business taking care of the essentials without worrying about the additional expenses for some of you this is about maximizing tax having an effective tax strategy in place knowing how to register yourself so that you're making the most out of the tax loopholes um, obviously that's going to be dependent on your state your territory or your country but i just think that there is a smarter way here of growing your investments because we're trying to make a harvest so the goal here is to follow through spirit saying it's your effort that reaps the rewards you guys are technically already on the right track sweet souls and i do think that before the end of the year a lot of these things are coming into fruition for you is there any other message from this card before i pull tarot spirit let's get rid of group ones and put yours there i don't think so i think we need to get into tarot Alrighty. What deck do we want for you guys? I don't think your deck is out here. I'm being guided to use a different tarot deck for you, so I'll be back. Okay, I have two decks that I want to use. The first deck is the Telesma Tarot. I just think that you guys need more bold sort of colors and shapes. So we'll see how this goes. And then I also have my little Spirit Speaks Tarot deck, just to clarify if we need to. So Spirit, for my group twos, those that chose these energies, Ceres and the Aquamarine, what do they need to know? What is happening for them before the end of the year? I'm being shown signs of a redemption. So this may have been a long time coming. You guys may have been rebuilding yourself after a major low point in your life you may have been working on this for quite some time They're showing me the seven of swords reversed spirit what is happening for my group twos before the end of the year 
We also have the Eight of Wands. We have Temperance, which is the art card in this deck. And at the back of the deck is that Judgment card, still reversed. Interesting energies. So, I'm just gonna have a quick sip of water because my throat just got really dry out of nowhere. There is a lot of fire and passion here. I'm seeing Sagittarius most prominently, but there are also signs here of Pluto. And I'm also, with Pluto, I'm actually feeling Aries more than Scorpio. I think that overall, before your ear, your ear, your year ends, there is this strong energy here of a redemption. You guys being able to finish the year strong. You may be recovering from something that happened earlier this year, or this could just be a long time coming. You've been hoping and wanting this for so, so long. The way that this is coming through is as a restoration. It's like, yes, there are, there's abundance, there's a harvest, but there's also a feeling here of a restoration. And I'm seeing restoration to a relationship in your life. You guys both feeling as though you're on the same page again. You're both in this. You're both wanting this. You're both equally investing energy into this. But I'm also seeing restoration when it comes to a sense of purpose and direction. You guys are really feeling the momentum of your energy. And even though you're seeing signs of success, it feels like this is only the beginning. It feels like this is very much your chance to continue to inspire yourself and to maintain motivation towards your goals. I think that you guys are on a bit of a journey. Although I definitely see physical and material success, I believe that the end of the year is just going to help you feel like you're back on track. It's giving this overall energy of creation, intention, and purpose. With the Seven of Swords reverse, there is a feeling of a situation gaining clarity. I think that something that you've been working on behind the scenes is going to have the opportunity to be revealed to close people in your life instead of being strategic and secretive there's something being unmasked here and it's something that you've been keeping from other people i do think that there are certain areas of your life that are merging especially if you resonate as somebody who has people that you keep separate from other people or if you keep certain interests separate from other people or other interests is a strong energy here of a blending and amalgamation. And I think that as this blends, there's going to be an awareness of like, well, that's one less thing to worry about. It feels like a relief. And I do see oil and water. So I don't think it's gonna be a perfect blend, but the fact that you no longer have to keep secrets is a huge relief for you. Now, this Ceres energy is definitely about nurturing. So I'm getting that overall with all this fire here. You guys may be receiving very positive news that helps you feel like something that you've been working on is going to end up in working out in your favor. I think you guys may be receiving positive physical news, health news, especially if you've been concerned about fertility or if you were recovering from a loss. There is a feeling here of you receiving good news after that. The energy behind this card, it just feels like you guys are operating in seasons. And the last half of this year is a season for growth. It's a season for positive change. And it's definitely a season for action. It's giving a lot of spring vibes. A lot of the, the newness and the promise of spring is coming through here. And even though it's six months, <laughs> it still feels like you have that momentum as you finish the year. You're going to be feeling a lot more balanced, a lot more harmonious. And that makes me think that a lot of you guys are going to feel as though you have a better grip on where your actions are taking you. I think that if you felt out of control 
earlier this year, as though everything is happening to you, not for you, it's going to feel like you have better balance. It's going to feel like, well, maybe that did happen for a reason, but also maybe this is all going to work out in the end. There may have been some surprises earlier this year that you just weren't ready for. And I think that as the year progresses, as it closes out, you will be able to look back with a little bit more of an understanding and an acceptance. You may not have all the answers. You may not truly know why things happen the way that they did, but there is this appreciation for it is out of my control and I accept that it has happened. I do think that you'll be spending a lot of time with loved ones. That seems to be a major focus here. And there is also an energy here of you putting more effort into yourself, into how you love yourself and how you um, beautify yourself. So there could be a lot of importance here in improving your image because of how it reflects your inner view of yourself. You guys may be undergoing some sort of cosmetic procedure. Take it as it resonates, okay? It could be as simple as a teeth whitening thing or a lot of um, facial, um, I want to say like treatments to help you feel more confident in your own skin, or it could be about cosmetic surgery as well. But this card does talk about beautifying the physical vessel to feel a stronger, um, I want to say connection to how you view yourself on the inside. Now, the other aspect of this card is that it does reference this motherly energy. So I think that on top of trying to look after ourselves and eating well and taking care of our physical appearance, there is this focus here on nurturing a connection with somebody else. And that's where I need to get clarity. So spirit, for my group twos, what is this connection? What is this connection that they are nurturing? before the end of the year what is the nature of this connection spirit okay they're showing me the ace of pentacles so it's coming through as queen of swords it's coming through as a friendship or a family member chariot reverse yeah this is likely a family member a, a feminine energy it's coming through in a very close sort of dynamic as though this is either an in-law or this is a parent or somebody who you feel you are um, parenting, nurturing. I think that this is a connection that serves another purpose. You and this person may have goals together. You may be working on some sort of project together. Or you may be trying to help this person. I'm hearing young person, okay? You may be trying to help this young person or as a young person um, try to achieve a material goal before the end of the year. You and this person are going to be spending more quality time together working on this task. And as you help them cultivate this task and not only just achieve it, but kind of map it out and explore it as an opportunity you start to feel a different kind of connection to them. So where they were just your sibling, just your friend, now there's this sort of mentorship going on where you're getting a better understanding of this person's characteristics outside your usual dynamic. Your bond to them is deepening because you're seeing them differently. With the Queen of Swords here, you're seeing this person as someone who is actually very intelligent. They're also very discerning. They've got a good head on their shoulders. They're very funny to you. You're, you find their sense of humor at times very blunt or a little bit like rough around the edges, but it does feel like this person and you are getting a better view of each other and you're seeing each other in a different way. I think that there is going to be a lot of powerful conversations with this person, whether it means to be that way or not. You and this person will start to feel closer to each other. However, it does feel like the nature of this connection is that it serves a very specific role and you're nurturing them to a certain point so that they can continue moving forward in the direction that they started on without you. 
So it's almost like somebody's leaving the nest here before the end of the year. And the goal is to make sure that this person is well informed, they know what they're doing, and they feel confident about what they need to do. You're a big part of the decision making process and making sure that this person feels confident about how to move forward. When they first come to you, they feel a little directionless. They don't really know what to make of their opportunity and they don't really know what the first steps are. So you help them map that out by offering them this paternal support as well as by facilitating information. Um, if you don't have the answers, you're holding their hand and you're asking the people who do have the answers, you know, my this is so-and-so and they're very interested in doing this. We came here because we need to know more about that. What can you tell us? That's what it feels like. You guys are a part of this process. So it's pretty special. Spirit, is there anything else that they need to know about their relationships before the end of the year when it comes to the status energy? We have the nine and the eight of swords. Nine of wands reversed, eight of swords. I do see you healing a relationship before the end of the year, but there's also a lot of focus on you. So you guys may have cut somebody out and at the end of the year, you're going to be very happy with that decision. You're not going to regret it. I think that the rest of 2024 is about you being careful of, of what you do for other people. With the Nine of Wands reversed here, there may be a relationship that you're kind of accommodating a little bit more than what you used to. Um, I see you guys big, being the bigger person here with the star upright. You're trying to learn from past mistakes and you're also just trying to be the optimist. You want to believe the best of people. You want to believe that, you know, as, as crazy as humanity is, there are still good people and there are still people that just need a little helping hand. You're a humanitarian with the star card and those humanitarian aspects are really thriving before the end of the year. You guys may be bending boundaries with the nine of wands reversed, but with the eight of swords upright, you just want to know that you've done everything that you can. You guys are coming through as a very much a motherly figure, someone who really cares about people. And it could be a part of your work as well, or it just could be a part of your values, but you're channeling this energy into your close relationships. And it genuinely seems to make you happy to do this with the nine of cups upright you're getting a lot out of it there's this energy here of you being genuinely altruistic i hope that's the right one or is it intrinsic anyway i'm pretty sure it's altruistic spirit is there anything they need to know anything else they need to know about that eight of wands energy that eight of wands energy i'm going to shuffle these cards back in because i feel like we've got we're going to go on a different tangent here. Spirit, what can you tell us about that Eight of Wands energy? Energy. What can you tell us about that Eight of Wands energy? We have a card. <laughs> We have the two of wands and they're also showing me the six of wands. So this eight of wands is definitely a sense of passion, movement, motivation. I think that before the end of the year, you're going to receive an exciting opportunity and it's not like an ace of wands, right? The ace of wands talks about something starting from the bottom up. Instead of it feeling like it's starting from the bottom up, it's actually happening on a pre-existing. So a pre-existing interest is going to receive positive news. And I do think that your efforts are being rewarded here. You're being recognized for your talents, for your skills, for your energy that you've already put into this. And this recognition gives you options. You do have an important decision to make here. But regardless of what you choose to do, it feels very exciting. It's like there's no wrong answers with the two of wands to the eight of wands and the six of wands. You just have options, which is wonderful. I think that this area of your life is definitely gaining traction unexpectedly. I think that's why it's so exciting because you weren't expecting things to progress as positively as they are. Um, 
this area of your life could correspond to work but it, it has to be something that you're passionate about that you're excited about so if that doesn't sound like your work life it's another area of your life that you put a lot of energy into it's definitely an outlet and now you're receiving recognition for that spirit what is their choices here with the two of wands the magician reversed so where this may just be a hobby or an interest you now have the opportunity to turn it into something a little bit more serious if you want to people are saying to you hey group two i really like what you're doing have you considered putting it online have you considered selling it online have you considered doing it this way there is the opportunity here to think outside the box and to expand. That's what the two of wands is. You have a decision to make about how far to take this and to expand it. And if you don't think that you're a very passionate person, this is still something that you're a part of that has the opportunity to expand. It feels creative in nature. Is there anything else that this could be in case they aren't resonating with these messages, Spirit? we have the six of it has something to do with an online venture for others of you six of swords reversed is something that is like creative writing or some sort of like online presence that's a creative outlet for you um it also feels like this is about you expressing your opinion and expressing an experience it's not you completely like it's not your identity you wouldn't say that this is a representation of you as a person but it's certainly a way of expressing something that you have been through or something that you're interested in one aspect of you and there is a connection to online here the internet keeps coming up with all this mercury energy um so what is the best outcome here for them? Queen of Swords, you're the decision maker. The best outcome is finding a way to juggle this with other responsibilities and making sure that you're not missing out on the opportunity to grow this. I definitely see financial opportunity here. If this isn't monetized, it can be. And if you haven't invested enough money into this, there is the opportunity to borrow money to kind of get to where you need to be. Um, but I, I just wonder if you guys need a little bit of help managing things. You guys feel like you need someone, a family member could be a good person to start with. Um, and running the thing from your home seems to be a good starting place as well as making sure that you have a short term plan for how you can maximize your skills or what got you recognized in the first place and, allow that to scale so whatever this is that's gaining recognition we have to scale it appropriately to ensure that we're meeting demand as well as our target audience you guys do want to try to keep up with that demand even though it feels like you're an underdog i think that your biggest challenge is not keeping up with the demand and the interest if you can keep up with the interest I do see success here. Otherwise, scale it back and keep it simple, you know? I think that um, the Queen of Swords is about some pretty big decisions and recognizing that you're the decision maker here. This is very exciting. I can also see how travel is a part of this or plays a role in this because you're very excited to be able to use your experiences and your information to make something out of this um i think i'm gonna have to move forward sweet souls i really want to talk about the seven of swords now what is the seven of swords about for my group we have the nine of cups interesting so before i was talking about that seven of swords as a turning point where you're being more honest with people around you about what you've been working on behind the scenes about what your ideas have are and about something that you're you're kind of keeping a secret you're pulling it into the light and you're telling people what you're doing 
You are keeping this news. News that was kept private is now being publicized. So group two, the way that this is coming through in your reading is that you have the opportunity here to kind of bring somebody into your world. Now with three of cups being reversed, it seems like you guys have a lot of eyes on you. There are a lot of people who don't need to know everything, which makes me think that there are certain parts of your life that you want to keep private for a reason. With the seven of swords being reversed here before the end of the year, there is a close friend who's coming into the inner inner circle that you have because you're choosing to open up more. And the way that this is coming through is that someone who's like on the outskirts of your social life, or even, this could even be a close, close friend, is getting the opportunity to understand you a little bit better because you're being more open about your feelings. You guys may resonate as people that have to kind of self-regulate a lot. You don't really open up much about the lows that you go through. I can see a very healing and open conversation happening here with somebody who's in your social circle. This feels like another feminine energy. And that doesn't mean that they're a female. They just have a very feminine energy and they want to know, they want to facilitate this conversation. They want to kind of understand how you actually feel and what, how you're actually doing. So this could be a reunion with a friend that you haven't seen in a long time, or this could be about you and your siblings getting together and talking about things that you haven't wanted to talk about for a very long time. There is an energy here of slowly. We're not ripping the band-aid off completely. We're just slowly having some of these conversations, doing what feels right. And if it doesn't feel right, we're going pause. Let's talk about this at a different date. I think that overall, you opening up a little bit more and getting to know their points of views and what they've been going through is going to make you very, very happy. You guys seem to feel good when the people that you care about are also doing good. So this is a very important turning point in those relationships because it is helping you feel closer to them. You guys do seem to be revealing secrets to each other and understanding more about what's going on in their world. These are friends who could live at a distance to you or these are conversations that have been put off for a very long time. Some of you are very surprised to know of what they've been going through. And there are some positives out of this too. Somebody could be announcing a wedding to you or an engagement to you. You're the first person who knows or they're the first person who knows about your good news. But instead of keeping this to ourself, we're finding ways to kind of communicate these things better with the people that we care about. This is a big deal because these are connections that you've wanted to strengthen before the end of the year. So I do see that happening. Is there anything they need to know about this temperance energy moving forward, Spirit? Is there anything else? We have the Three of Swords. So you're healing a relationship here. Relationships are so important in this group. The High Priestess reversed. Who is this? Eight of Swords be an air sign they could have gemini aquarius or libra in their big three doesn't always mean their sun sign it could be their moon or their rising <sighs> who is this person are you guys going through a lot in like your family relationships because i'm seeing more balance here in a relationship before the end of the year you had to both make a difficult decision to just focus more on yourselves instead of being able to be there for this person and instead of expecting them to be there for you you decided you know what the best thing i can do is just focus on my own future and there was a separation between you and this person where you were no contact you decided that it was the best thing moving forward no contact, no more um, decision-making together. 
the best decision you made was to focus on yourself, but it was a decision that didn't feel quite right. And with the Three of Swords reverse, this temperance energy is about bringing harmony back to that situation. Although we can't fully regret the actions that we made because they were the best things we could have done at that time, we do regret how we left things. Some things were unsaid and some things cut deeper than they were meant to. So this situation feels like it's about us bringing ourselves closure by trying to figure out what our options are moving forward. We want peace in that relationship, but we also want to make sure that we're not blinding ourselves by making the same mistake again. So you guys do seem to be actively healing a lot of the relationships in your life and they feel very family based or friendship based. I think that there could be some significant milestones occurring in your family and you want to make sure that everybody's talking to each other and that you're all communicating to each other moving forward. You may also be playing peacemaker for other people that you love and care about. But with the high priestess reverse, there's still a lot of unknowns about this situation. You can only really control yourself, your own feelings, your own actions, and even then, a lot of the feelings that you have don't seem to be in your control. So you're doing what you can to cope with what you have. You seem to be concerned that whoever is involved in this situation doesn't want reconciliation. They don't want peace. They're still upset or it still hurts too much. I think that this person is somebody who you will have not spoken to for quite some time or these two people haven't spoken for quite some time. It could very well be a trifecta with three people involved and you all want answers and you all want peace, but you're seeking peace for yourselves instead of peace together. There will be multiple opportunities for reconciliation this year in this setting. These people are going to be brushing shoulders multiple times and the confusion seems to lie in, well, how much do we expect from these opportunities? Should we just expect friendliness? Should we expect uh, no contact and respectful boundaries? Or should we expect this to be a wonderful, significant opportunity to embrace reconciliation all full steam ahead? I think it's important to note that from my objective point of view, you all, whoever's involved in this, all seems to have a level of respect for each other. You may show that differently and your personalities may clash, but with the Four of Pentacles, there is a mutual respect to just give each other space. This still feels fresh. I don't know how much time has passed. I don't know what has happened here, but there is still a level of hurt and there is at least one person still in crisis mode. They're not ready to forgive and forget. They still feel that sting of betrayal and they're still overcoming that feeling of loss. They're not ready to forgive and forget yet. So I think that the best thing you can do for peace moving forward is to continue to focus on yourself. Have the conversations that you want to have, but go in with that intuitive, like read the room is what I'm saying. Otherwise, it could be a bit of a painful sting of realizing, you know, as much as we have fond memories and a sentimental attachment because we may have known this person since childhood, it may not be the best time. There still is collateral that is being cleaned up from this previous situation. So before the end of the year, there is an opportunity here for reconciliation, but I think we need to measure our expectations. Some people are not ready to completely forgive and forget. We have to kind of go by their timing because we are trying to each respect each other's boundaries and limitations. So that's what I'm seeing there. I want to close this reading by just taking one final look at that last judgment card energy. Is there any information here about finances for my group? Twos. What do they need to know about finances with that last judgment energy? Is there anything else? We have the eight of pentacles reversed. Ju Sorry, this is the magician. I'm so used to saying judgment at this point. And the, the ace of wands with the seven of wands at the back of the deck. 
So we know that that last judgment energy is about redemption. And I definitely see a lot of redemption coming through in this group, especially in your relationships and especially within those close connections of like friendships and family. Outside of that, I'm also getting messages here about how this redemption pertains towards your financial situation, because I do see a harvest here. Now, you guys will have a choice to make before the end of the year about how you can maximize your income by working smarter, not harder. I actually think that you may be dialing back your working hours. You may have a huge readjustment to what you feel is going to give you a better work-life balance. With the Eight of Pentacles reverse, you're reducing your workload here. And I do think that this is because you want to keep a passion alive. You may decide that you want to put more passion into this. Or it may be that you want to keep the passion in your career. So the best thing to do is to try to limit the amount of hard labor you're putting into that so that you don't lose that zeal, that that purpose and that sense of passion. I think that when it comes to finances, there is a feeling here of needing to be more realistic. You may have started the year being very ambitious about a financial goal. And what you're discovering is little anomalies, incidentals, expenses that you weren't prepared for. And that's just the nature of life. There is an energy of acceptance about these things, but it wasn't a part of your original plan. Something's happening here so that you have to be more realistic about the amount of money you can earn towards a specific goal or towards your lifestyle in general. So by taking some time off, we're ensuring that we're maintaining integrity when it comes to our overall sense of passion. And we're feeling a little bit more excited about our opportunities because now we have a realistic readjustment. So I think you guys are going to receive a revelation before the end of the year about your income and about changes that need to be made to the amount of hours you're working or to the amount of money you're expecting to make. And even though it's not what you expected, it's not what you originally planned for, now that you have the real life knowledge, right? Now that you know the truth, you can make more of a realistic plan on how to move forward. And from this little realization, this reality check, you're forging new ideas, new inspiration, and new solutions. This doesn't feel like bad news, but it does feel like a reality check. I think that your energy is able to turn this into a positive situation though. And you seem to be more excited now about how you can handle this moving forward. And this is probably going to be more towards the end of the year, sweet souls. If it is something that you're aware of now, you're going to feel that resolution well before the end of the year. There is a genuine energy of resolution occurring almost at the same time as that reality check. So it's not something to be afraid of. It's just something to be aware of. And it's really important that you maintain your positive mindset because you seeking solutions is what helps you recover from this and is what makes this a redemption. If you allow yourself to really dip into those lower moods and to really bear the load of loss, then we seem to be more focused on the problems than the solutions. But honestly, I think this group, you guys just carry, man. You, you are a very strong force of nurturing and growth. And you may be so used to being that kind of person for other people that it's just in your nature at this point. But I stand by my original prediction. I really feel that overall you're closing this year feeling like you're harvesting and reaping rewards for the efforts that you've put in and any challenges that come your way, you handle it with a lot of grace group too. 
So that's what I'm seeing for you before the end of 2024. I'm going to take this into the extended reading now where we will do a in-depth breakdown. This might help clarify things and just get more information. So the way it's going to work is I'll pull six cards one card for your relationships, one card for your money situation, one card for your home situation, one card for your family, for your friends and for you. And then I'm going to be clarifying each of the energies, having a look at opportunities, challenges and any advice you may need. So if that sounds helpful and especially if the first part of your reading did resonate, the link to your extended reading is in the description box and the pinned comment. That link takes you to my website group too, where I host many extended readings, a majority of my extended readings at this stage. Um, so please make sure you select the right reading and the right group. You will be the group two reading of the before the end of 2024. And I would have posted this in June 2024 as well. So thank you so much for all your time, your energy and your support. If this is where we're parting ways, I wish you peace, prosperity, abundance, happiness, health, wealth, success, and joy on your journey ahead until we meet again. Bye. and welcome to your reading if you chose the smoky quartz crystal or this waxing crescent moon card then this is going to be your reading welcome i'm going to be asking spirit what is happening for you my viewer before the end of 2024 before we get into it thank you so much for clicking on my video today and choosing me as your reader i have such good vibes for this group so I'm hoping to be able to get the most clear, honest messages for you. I've already done my affirmations. If this reading does resonate, sweet souls, I will be offering an extended reading. The idea behind the extended readings is they're an opportunity to delve deeper into your messages, a way of getting more clarity. And by purchasing the extended reading, you're also supporting me as a reader and this community so that I can continue to do what I do. So in the extended reading, we're getting a full breakdown of what is happening for you before the end of 2024, looking at your relationships, at your money circumstances, at your home life, at your family, at your friendships, and having a look at you. In each of those areas of your life, we're also going to be having a look at the opportunities, challenges, and advice that you will need. So... There's a lot to be covered. We'll start here on YouTube, which will be Spirit's Choice. And let's have a look at what's happening for you before the end of the year. Now, one thing I can see with this waxing crescent moon card. Before the end of the year, there is a major opportunity here. To explore something and to see how far it can go without committing to the overall picture. You guys will have the opportunity to understand whether this idea, this desire has potential to become something more significant. I feel like this waxing crescent moon is potential. It's something trying to formulate from the ground up. I feel drawn towards the guidebook. So let me just bring something up here. The key word in the guidebook for this card is initiative. The moon is beginning to show herself and beneath the surface, the roots of the seeds you planted are beginning to weave and strengthen in the soil. Growth can be broken up into two parts, obstacles, which are negative patterns from the past and actions, which are changes made to achieve alignment. What this means is that focusing your energy forward towards what you want to accomplish is a form of self care. Just resist the urge to overwater your garden as you don't want to end up with root rot. So there is a beautiful energy here of you stepping into a main character energy, taking initiative, paying attention to what we know from the past so that we can learn from our mistakes and choosing actions that can make positive changes. This is a beautiful starting point, but I want to get more information. So let's get tarot out now. 
I feel drawn towards the Moonchild Tarot for you. So we're gonna use that. Spirit, for my group threes, what is happening for them before the end of 2024? What is happening for my group threes before the end of 2024? We have the Knight of Cups. Actually, I feel like you guys need to be a little bit higher. There we go. Have the Knight of Cups coming out. What's happening before the end of 2024? We have the Ten of Cups. Spirit, do you want this card reversed or upright? It's reversed. We do have the Six of Cups coming out with that card as well. I don't know if I can show them both. Let's try to do that. It's a little bit better. I will fix that up. I'll just get all your cards out first. Spirit, what else can you tell us about what is happening for group three before the end of 2024? What else can you tell us? Okay. They're showing me the Queen of Swords reversed. What else can you tell us? And we're being shown the chariot reversed. At the back of the deck is shadow work. Interesting. I forgot that I had this camera on a different setting for the last group, so I'll just adjust that a little bit. How does that look? Hmm. Could be better. It's all right, I guess. <laughs> We'll just make the most out of what we have. Okay. Where is my Amazonite? Here it is. So what is going on for you, group three? So we know that you have this energy here of initiative, and I can really understand that self-care message better now. Now that we have all your cards out, I honestly do think that you will have the opportunity to either initiate a relationship or deepen an existing relationship. But before the end of the year, you are re examining your connections, your emotional well being, and you're trying to understand other people's actions. It seems as though you guys are hyper fixating. On your love life and you may also be hyper fixating on what isn't going right when it comes to love i am getting a lot of judgmental energy here and i don't think it's just you i think you guys are feeling as though a lot of people have eyes on you and they may be really judging you the choices you make the, th the things you decide to do you guys feel as though you're combating other people's views or visions of you it may also feel like people are projecting ideas or expectations onto you. And I think that as the year closes out, there is this battle to obtain sovereignty. So sovereignty, this idea of like having more freedom and control. Because I do almost feel like other people are complicating certain areas of your life. Now, with that being said, we can see a lot of themes over here of loved ones and relationships and a family dynamic that isn't making you happy. There could be a connection here to a child or to children. And it feels like you're trying to figure out how to make those relationships work because there is an energy here of it isn't where you want it to be. There is an unhappiness over here. And it feels like somebody else is also unhappy with us. So before the end of the year, I think in your family life, you're either trying to manage everybody's joys and feelings. And there could be a lot of emphasis on spending quality time with the family. But with the Six of Cups upright... We're almost holding on to these connections because of how they made us feel in the past. Because we're still looking at this relationship through the lens of, well, when I was a child, this is what we did. When we were younger, this is how we hung out. When we were little, like, this is what we did. 
I think before the end of the year, there is this nostalgic energy of you missing somebody and a version of them and who they were when you were younger. But I think there's also this reality of like, it's not like that anymore. Either because you and this person are no longer as close as you used to be, or you're just not those people that you used to be. This is a major theme for you because there is a fondness towards the past, but there's also an awareness of how we don't have that in our future based on our current energies. There may be an issue unraveling within your family where you feel you have to choose sides. But I think with the Ten of Cups reversed, you know that emotionally your best moments were in the past. You don't want things to continue the way that they are because you feel like it's not going to make you happy. It's genuinely not going to bring any form of fulfillment. It's better this way for everybody. So let's clarify what's going on over there. Spirit, what is this Ten of Cups reversed about for my group ones? What is this Ten of Cups reversed about for my group ones? Okay. Being shown the Two of Cups. What is this Ten of Cups about for my group ones? The star card reversed. You guys may be missing somebody, a loved one. This person could be traveling or you guys may be overburdened with other responsibilities. There is a lot of love for this person though. A lot of love. They just can't be with you. So this feels like someone who's very much the yin to your yang. You guys complement each other and they have you have a very strong friendship with this person as well as an emotional bond. They're very, very um, close to you. They just know you. They know your character. They know what your interests are. Like the two of you have a lot of mutual interests. Spending time with this person is easy. It's natural. They feel like your soulmate. You're missing this person. Before the end of the year, it feels like this person is at a physical distance to you. And it also feels like you're keeping up with them online or you're trying to maintain a long distance connection. I think that this connection is impacted by other responsibilities, by other burdens. And there could be a conversation you want to have with this person, maybe because this person is your confidant. This person feels like family, but they don't have to be. They could also be a very best friend or a cousin. Not that cousins aren't family, but you know what I mean. They felt more like a sibling or a parent, but it could be a cousin or a best friend as well. And I think what's going on here is you want this person around, but they just can't be here. They're not as available to you as you, as you want them to be. So with the star card reversed, before the end of the year, we used to rely on this person to help us sort through hard feelings, to help us understand our own mind as well as our own heart. And we don't have that anymore. We're having to do this by ourselves. So we're missing this person a lot, thinking about them a lot. Why is this a main theme, Spirit? I know this person is obviously very loved by you, but why is this a main theme? The full card reverse. There's something about your future that you're delaying taking action towards because you want this person there with you. You want this person to either be a part of the process of you stepping forward or you feel like you have unfinished business with this person. There's baggage that needs to be cleared before you do this. For some of you, you're the one that has the opportunity to move. And before you move, you want to talk to this person. You want to talk about the future, clear the air and to kind of pick their brains over what you should do. Now I can see with the full reverse that this is a major theme for you because you don't do anything without consulting this person first. And there's other issues outside of your relationship with them that you need to talk about with them because they're the people you trust. 
and they help you feel ready when you're on the precipice of making these big decisions. So it feels like this person is your support, your rock behind you taking a major leap of faith in your life. Are they going to be able to reconcile this before the end of the year? We have two cards, the Queen of Cups reversed. No, if you rely on this person's input, advice, and support, you're not going to be able to make this decision before the end of the year. You give this person a lot of weight over the decisions you should be making. That's why Waxing Crescent Moon is so important as a theme, because that card is ultimately about initiative. And instead of taking initiative over here, you're waiting for this person's input, for their support. It's like you need their endorsement or you need their approval first. If they aren't here in the process, involved in the process or able to offer approval, then I don't see this progressing. Especially with that Six of Swords reversed. I actually think that this is a situation that is going to result in regression instead of progression. Six of Swords reverse makes me think you're going backwards before you go forwards. What is their advice with this energy spirit? Their advice, Nine of Swords, you need to get out of your head. Your advice is to get the right advice. <laughs> the Hierophant card is almost telling you to get professional advice here. Yes, we have this beautiful connection, but you guys may need the help of a paid professional to sort through this and to help you cope better, as well as to help you understand your attachment to this person better. And I do think that getting professional advice would also help ease your anxiousness. I want to say anxiety, but listen, I'm not here to assume anxiousness. Um, the Nine of Swords is ultimately a card of overthinking, it's a card of feeling like you're in the dark because you're surrounded by all these questions, all these possibilities, all these unknowns, all these fears. It's a very debilitating feeling and it honestly just makes your chest feel so, so tight and your head is both dizzy and light as it's overwhelmed with all these thoughts and feelings, but it also feels heavy because there's so much weight on your shoulders in general. So your advice with this Nine of Swords is to seek clarity. I do think you're going to have regrets if you let this situation get the better of you. And I do think with the Hierophant Upright, y'all need to consider a more structured approach to this area of your life by either getting that professional support or by grounding this idea through practical follow-up. Y'all need a practical approach to this situation. Otherwise, you overthink it and you immediately have regrets that you didn't take action sooner. So that's what I'm seeing. I'm going to pack these cards up and we're going to have a look at that Knight of Cups. Now, intuitively, I feel as though before the end of the year, there will be a love offer being made. But the thing is, we know that you're in this initiative energy. So I need to have a look at what this is because for a lot of you, you may be the ones initiating this Knight of Cups. Spirit, what is this Knight of Cups about for my group threes? We have the Emperor. Emperor. Can I just say yes or no, Spirit? Are my viewers the ones who take this action? Are my viewers the ones who take this action. We have the moon reversed. You're a part of it. I don't think you're the one that takes the action, but you have to welcome it. It seems you're being pursued here. <laughs> and unless you're open to it, you're going to misinterpret it. A lot of you have a very determined, very fiery, very masculine, very mature energy pursuing you before the end of the year. They could be an Aries. Um, they come across as someone that knows what they want and they could come on very strong in the beginning. Your energy comes up as a little bit confused. I don't think you need to pursue this person for them to 
initiate something with you, but you almost need to give them permission to continue to pursue you. As it feels like this person starts to feel very confused after they initially approach you about what you want and about whether you're even interested in them. It seems that this person will feel friend zoned by a lot of you. And I think it comes down to the fact that you guys may not know if you actually want anything with this person, but you guys may also feel like this person isn't taking you as seriously as they are. So there seems to be some sort of misunderstanding between the two of you. I also feel like this person is very attracted to you. And so you may misconstrue that attraction as them wanting something that you aren't interested in. Spirit, what happens with this Knight of Cups before the end of 2024? What is happening here for my group threes? What is this Knight of Cups about? We have the Three of Pentacles reverse. This is somebody who's going to know you through a shared environment. They will most likely know you from a group of friends, through your family, or through your workplace. And they want to get to know you more intimately. This is somebody who's wanting to strengthen a pre-existing connection. Or they want to know you under different pretenses. Instead of just being your work friend, they want to start dating you more seriously. The Knight of Cups is a heartfelt gesture, action taken from the heart. And often it's a shy approach. As bold as this person's energy seems to be, the way that they approach you could appear very tentative. And it's being met with a lot of confusion on your end. You're like, what are you doing? What is this? What's happening? Page of Wands, this is definitely someone that's very attracted to you. I think that honestly, this is somebody who's already going to be in your circle. They want to know you better. They want to spend more time with you. They may rush intimacy just to prove a point. They may try to do something to show you like we're not friends, like I'm trying to get to know you better. Um, you feel a little apprehensive about this. You're not receiving it completely openly. Spirit, what is going on here with this Knight of Cups? We have the Ten of Wands. This person may have had a crush on you for quite a while. They're showing up as the person that has a crush on you. They may have been carrying this crush for quite a while. What's happening here is they're finally expressing their feelings to you. They're finally showing you through their actions and their communication how they actually feel about you. And it's a huge relief for them. That also just feels like there's a lot weighing on this. So no pressure, but a lot of pressure. They definitely feel like they have to kind of do this. They may have set themselves a time limit, like before the end of 2024, I have to do this. Um, how are they going to be received? How is my viewer receiving this person's spirit? We have the seven of wands showing up. It was actually as a blockage like that. It kind of wants to be a blockage. So I almost wonder, I think you admire this person's courage. I think there is attraction, but there's almost an obligation here as well because they're an underdog, because they put in that effort. How will they feel about this person, Spirit? How does my viewer feel about this person when they reach out? When this person... Queen of Swords reversed. You're trying to keep an open mind, but you already have that preconceived idea of them. It's hard for you to shake your initial judgments, your initial impression. You already have an impression of this person, and now they're trying to come in and change that by displaying affection and romantic intentions, and you guys are like, Ugh. I don't know. It seems like you're trying to keep an open mind, but there's already a preconceived mental fixation on this person that you're having a hard time letting go of. Yeah. There's also this feeling of like, you're not sure if that you're compatible. That's what it feels like. I think that if you're not compatible, it's an intellect thing. You're worried that you and this person have different sense of humors, have different interests coming down to the types of um, TV shows and movies that you like. This person may 
be more interested in you physically I feel like you're questioning because you feel like they don't actually know you and there is a fear on your end of showing this person your true self and then ruining the foundation of relationship that you already have with them it's very complex spirit what is the advice for my viewer with this person's pursuit of them what is the advice for my viewer we got a quad the queen of pentacles reversed ultimately sweet souls i think there is a lot to gain out of letting this person in and reciprocating um this is great practice <laughs> It's great experience, but with the Queen of Pentacles reverse, your instincts are spot on. And as much as this is a wonderful opportunity for you to be more vulnerable and for you to really sort of test your boundaries and um, put yourself out there, I think with the Queen of Pentacles reverse, you're going to realize that a lot of what you had instinctually picked up was correct. There is a difference here in what you both kind of are compatible in terms of compatibility but there's also a difference here in terms of what you're desiring and your advice with the queen of pentacles reverse is very simply don't settle i think this is a short fling i don't think this is a long-term thing queen of pentacles reversed don't settle let's shuffle these cards back into the deck let's have a look at that queen of swords now we did have her pop up here so I do think that while this person reaches out to you, you guys may have your mind preoccupied by somebody else. Although this person's taking initiative, it seems like you're fixated on a different expectation in love or a different person. So let's have a look. What is this fixation? What is this Queen of Swords about for my viewer spirit before the end of 2024? We have the Knight of Swords reversed. We also have the Six of Swords upright. So a lot of swords energies here. Hmm. Ten of Swords. I'm just going to go one more card. Three of Wands. Hey, with the Four of Swords in the back of the deck. So many swords. Let me just have a quick sip of water. Okay, so how do I feel about this? <sighs> All these cards are clarifying the Queen of Swords reverse too. That's just so many swords, group three. It's interesting because I think that this is a theme of kind of not wanting to repeat mistakes. Like you don't want to misjudge characters and you're worried about letting somebody in who's just going to hurt you again i think some of y'all are dealing with a past person here someone who's already betrayed you and before the end of the year not only are you being pursued by somebody else but you still have something with a past person and you're questioning whether there is a future here the queen of swords reverse your mind is preoccupied by a betrayal from the past somebody's actions and with the knight of swords being reversed we perceive those actions as a mistake we perceive those actions as very hurtful and we also feel like this person didn't tell us the full truth we feel like this person ran away instead of confronting this situation head-on and dealing with it head-on that's why you have so much grace for this other person because they have the courage they, you just wish that that courage was on this person instead. With the Six of Swords upright, I do think that part of you is genuinely focused on moving forward, but I also think another part of you is still stuck in the past. And the Three of Wands reverse tells me you're not necessarily waiting around for this person, but you're also having a hard time energetically separating. I think for most of you, this is a no contact situation for that for that ten of swords to be there and the four of swords to be here too spirit will my group threes hear from this person before the end of 2024 this person may have been an air sign gemini libra aquarius but they're heavy on your mind before the end of the year you're having a hard time letting this person go spirit will this will group three hear from this person before the end 
of the year. We have the Three of Swords reversed. Honestly, it's very unlikely. I do think that your spiritual team is purposefully limiting contact between you and this person. The goal here is to restrict because you're still both healing. And the Three of Swords is talking about actions that were taken to grow in different directions, to expand in different directions. I do think that this is a very messy situation, one that may have not offered much closure, but really you're being protected from this person's actions and communication so that you don't get any more hurt unnecessarily. Um, Spirit, in this situation, what is the reason behind my viewer having a hard time letting this person go? The Empress reversed. It's interesting because as I asked that question, I actually got a message that for some of you, it's not just one person from your past. Before the end of the year, you may find yourself going back mentally and revisiting past relationships, plural, questioning those actions and the endings and the betrayals and just thinking about exes and people that you've dated previously or people who have hurt you previously. This doesn't have to always be about a romantic like situation. Maybe it was just a situation where you felt betrayed in general. And I can see with the Empress energy reverse, there is this overall awareness of the fact that what you want hasn't seemed to have arrived yet. So you're having a hard time letting this person or these people go, whichever resonates, because you're wanting growth. You're wanting something fruitful. I feel like you feel more than ready for it too. You guys may have been manifesting growth in this area of your life for a long time. When I first started reading tarot, I used to see the Empress reversed as a woman who's been pregnant for far too long, as though you've been growing this idea or this, this new beginning or this opportunity, and you've just been waiting for it to come to fruition. You've been waiting to give birth. You've been waiting for it to arrive. I think you guys are at the point where you're even questioning, is there something wrong with me? Am I the problem? <laughs> With this Empress energy. I have to laugh because if I don't laugh, I'll cry. So I'm not laughing at you. I'm trying to lighten the tension here. My eyes are prickling. I feel like with this Empress energy reverse, some of y'all are questioning you, whether you're the problem. Am I the reason that this, this seems to continually fail? And I do think that before the end of 2024, we're, we're cycling through these exes, these past people who have hurt us or who have ghosted us or who have betrayed us. Some of them may pop up again, but for the most part, you're done waiting for these people. You're just questioning, well, where am I supposed to go to from here? It feels like you guys don't have the clarity that you need. You want to take initiative, but what are you supposed to do with this Queen of Swords? So we're finding ourselves hyper fixating on the little things because we feel like we still don't have the bigger picture. Spirit, what is my viewer's advice in this area of their life? We have the Queen of Swords, <laughs> how ironic. Your advice is also the card that drew us here in the beginning. Queen of Swords, but upright. And then the Four of Wands. Spirit's really asking, look at that, sweet souls, it's coming. It's coming. You're being saved. Look at that. You're being protected from people who seemed right, but they really weren't. They really weren't right. And I think that what you want is also, honestly, as... as silly as it sounds because you guys have probably heard it so many times but what you're seeking is also seeking you it is possible whether you're manifesting it or whether you're just patiently waiting i do see partnership for this group and it may not happen this year it may happen next year but before the end of the year your advice is to stay true to the lessons that you've learned Stay true to what you deserve and to how you deserve to be treated. Stay true to how you feel about yourself and other people. 
If something doesn't feel right, honor that feeling. Honor your ideas and your values when it comes to partnerships and connection. If something doesn't value partnership and connection or if someone doesn't value partnership and connection as much as you, honor that. Identify that and acknowledge it. I feel like you guys are really being saved from a lot of incompatibilities and your advice is to make clear decisions about the people in this area of your life. Take that step back to observe a higher perspective. You can't know all the little details because it's not your responsibility. It is your responsibility to make the decisions for yourself, like this card talks about, seeing it as a form of self-care. But in order to do that, you do need to take a step back. Look at the bigger picture get out of the hyperfixation and protect your peace because some of these people were not honoring that foundation of peace that you've cultivated for yourself you guys are a little bit more traditional is what it feels like and i think that you're attracting people who don't honor the traditional roles or beliefs when it comes to partnerships so don't force those people to fit in that mold. Keep yourself perceptive and available for somebody who can see the same thing as you, who has the same vision. It may not happen this year. I just want to give you that heads up. I really feel like you're being called to have boundaries and to be perceptive so that you can acknowledge when that person comes in. It feels like they're coming in 2025. So that's what I'm seeing. Let's keep moving forward. We're going to have a look at this chariot energy now. So intuitively, I was feeling like this chariot energy is about a feeling of um, willpower. You either losing willpower or you feeling like you're running out of steam. Now, the chariot can also be about you struggling to nurture. So I wonder if there is an area of your life that is feeling like it's either you just smothering it or somebody like running away from you. <laughs> Let's figure out what this is. Spirit, what is this chariot energy about for my group threes before the end of the year? What is happening with this chariot energy? We have the two of cups, yeah. <laughs> two of cups is so important to you. The nine of wands and the knight of swords with the emperor at the back of the deck. So the two of cups, let's talk about it. This card has come out for you so many times in almost every aspect of your reading. That card is the fundamental card of being able to compromise, being able to see eye to eye and valuing a person for who they are, not for who, how you want them to be, not for who you expect them to be, but seeing them for who they are and loving them for who they are. This is a card of partnership, it's a card of friendship, and it is a card of understanding. So it's come up so many times. I think a major theme for you is having that energy emulate through all the different facets of connections that you have in your life, whether this is friendship, family members, or lovers. It's very important to you that people see you for who you are and that you get the opportunity to see them. You want to be surrounded by matches, by people who are partners, people who give as much as you give, and people who live authentically to their nature. You guys seem to be cultivating and curating very intimate relationships. And before the end of 2024, this chariot energy reversed is about you being able to address your ideas of partnerships, the relationships that you already have and the relationships that you want moving forward by observing the challenges that you've experienced. I still feel like this is a group that's manifesting some sort of relationship and I think that even if you haven't had the chance to experience it in this year you're going to end this year reflecting and reevaluating on that manifestation there is this energy of perseverance here 
with this nine of wands. You don't want to give up, but you're recognizing that you can't keep doing things as you've been doing. The chariot reversed is an identification of willpower diminishing. You don't have the strength to continue to do things the way that you've been doing. So you're trying to learn from your mistakes and you're trying to figure out, is there a better way to approach this goal? Is there a better way to manifest this relationship? Is there anything I can do to make this process better moving forward? With the Knight of Swords upright, some of y'all may even consider putting yourself out there. You're looking for things that you can do. So if this is about dating, I wouldn't be surprised if you're, you know, putting yourself out there online, joining different groups, trying to think about physically, is there anything that I can do to boost my ideas of success in this area of my life? With the Emperor reversed, I think that the Chariot reversed is telling us that ultimately we're not the problem here. <laughs> I think what's, what's wrong is our expectations you guys are really trying to will something to happen. And just because it has, hasn't happened yet doesn't mean that it's something that you're doing wrong. I do think that it's healthy to reflect and to think about how far you've come and to have a look at what you have learned from your previous interactions and to take away um, the positives as well as the lessons and the negatives. But I think overall with the Emperor Reverse, the Chariot Reverse is telling us our initiative, we're approaching our life as though we have this masculine need to just fix everything wrong. When life isn't always like that, there are certain anomalies that require us to surrender as there are things out of our control that are being fine-tuned in the background. And it's not our responsibility, nor is it within our realm of control to be able to make that happen sooner or under a specific outcome. I think the best thing that you can do over here, I mean, I will get advice, is to stay true to the idea. What is your original intention over here? What opportunity are you trying to manifest? Stay true to that and let the universe figure out the fine details. Let the universe bring that plan to you. I think your problem over here is trying to control too much and blaming yourself too quickly for when things don't work out the way that you're hoping it will. So Spirit, what is going on over here? Is there any advice that you have for my viewer when it comes to this chariot energy reversed? We have the five of cups reversed. Recover from your losses as quickly as you can. The ten of um, swords reverse at the back of the deck I honestly think you're a bit too good at beating yourself up <laughs> you're a bit too good at assuming that things are going wrong when everything is happening exactly as it is intended to I don't think this is your burden to bear and I think that your best advice is just to recover from the losses recover from the betrayals and keep a positive open mind about how this is all coming into fruition for you let it happen for you don't force it to happen when you expect it to happen or as you expect it to happen. Really keep an open mind and continue to work through any feelings of loss, betrayal and discomfort that you're uncovering. Because when the time is right, it is really important that your mind is open and that your heart is open. There is a potential here for you to be so focused on what isn't going right that the disappointment creates a hardened shell around your heart space to the point where the right person has a lot of work to do just to get to know you. And instead of it being a natural process of you two learning and about each other and learning to trust each other, there are these extra layers of protection that they need to work through. It could create a lot more resistance than necessary when the right person comes through. So that is what I'm seeing for you, my group threes. I'm going to end your YouTube reading here. I hope that this reading has been helpful for you. I hope it has clarified a lot of how your year is going to end. I am going to take this into the extended reading now where we will do the full breakdown. I'll be doing the six card spread 
to have a look at your love life, your money situation, your home life, your family situation, your friendships, and you. And then I will clarify each of those aspects by looking at opportunities and challenges you may experience before the end of the year. If that sounds interesting, and if you would like to support me in this channel as your reader, do click on the link in the description box or the pinned comment. That link will take you to my page on my website where I host my extended readings. There are extended readings plural, so please make sure you click on the right video before you purchase it. Remember your group three of the before the end of 2024 reading that I posted in June 2024. If that's where you're going, I will see you very, very soon. If this is where you're leaving us, thank you for all your time, your energy, and your support right here on YouTube. I wish you peace, prosperity, abundance, happiness, health, wealth, success, and joy on your journey ahead. Until our paths cross again, bye. Hi my group fours and welcome to your reading. If you chose this beautiful, I want to say it's like a form of lace agate because it's got these wonderful layers of color and then it's got this really gorgeous pigment up the top. So it definitely seems to be a type of agate. But if you chose this beautiful fiery looking crystal or the Venus card over here, then this is going to be your reading. Welcome sweet souls. We're asking spirit for messages about the rest of your 2024. This is the before the end of 2024 prediction reading. The YouTube portion of this reading is very much going to be spirit's choice. We're going to let spirit take the wheel and spirit will be telling us what you need to know about the rest of 2024, what is happening for you. This card is already a clue. If this YouTube reading does resonate, I will be doing a full breakdown in the extended reading on my website. The full breakdown will be a six card spread where we have a look at your love life, your money situation, your home life, your family, your friendships, and then we have a look at you. In each of those six areas of your life, we're also going to be having a look at opportunities and challenges you can expect before the end of 2024. So the extended reading is a wonderful way to get more clarity, to get a better picture of how everything is happening for the rest of the year. And it's also a wonderful way to support the channel as it is monetized. So see how you go. We have to start here to get there. So let's get into your reading, sweet souls. With this Venus card coming out, this is our first clue about what is happening for you before the end of 2024. Venus's energy is saying that you guys are going to be experiencing a boost in the amount of compassion that you feel. I think that there could be a big focus here on making sure that the people that are around you are very loving, are very supportive, and you're going to want to really nurture yourself for the rest of the year. I do see Venus playing a big role in how you see yourself and how you feel about yourself and in how you choose to nurture the connections around you. You guys are going to be surrounded by some pretty beautiful souls. I'm only feeling like that it's going to be a community, but we'll see if any specific people pop out as well, any mentionable, notable people. But I do think that it will be multiple people around you, group four. I can see an energy here of like a community of support. And Venus is really highlighting this wonderful warmth, this wonderful connection. I also think with Venus being here that there is a message about you guys being able to feel a little bit more confident within your skin so I think that before the rest of the year, if you guys have had a goal in mind, whether it's you're on a skincare journey or a fitness journey, or maybe you're on some sort of sleep schedule because you want to feel better in your body, I think that you guys will be achieving it because there seems to be a boost here in self-confidence and self-image. The way that you're seeing yourself is so precious and I wouldn't be surprised if the people around you contribute to that too. 
but I can't help but feel all this love radiate from within you. This is a big theme before the end of the year because it does end up attracting opportunities towards you too. Because you radiate so much love for self, you're attracting a strong sense of love towards you as well. The guidebook for this card talks about this card also bringing in this need for pleasure and intimacy. So I really think that a lot of you guys are going to be focusing on relationships that make you feel good about yourself. They stimulate you and they also help you reach that soft, pure part of yourself that not everybody gets to see if they're a stranger. I think you'll be spending a lot of time with some very close people in your life. And I do want to get some tarot out now to get some more specific predictions. But this card does talk about intimate relationships. So I want to have a look at what tarot will divinate for us. What deck should I use, Spirit? We might use the animal tarot deck. This is Orion's animal deck. Spirit, tune me into group four's energy, please. Yeah, there is a glow up here with Venus. Perfumes, lotions, good food. You guys may be wined and dined before the end of the year. You could be receiving perfume or gifting people perfume, taking more um, of an active approach towards looking after yourself. Or maybe you always do that. Maybe you're just a person who takes that extra time to like moisturize your skin and to really make sure that your hair is like as you want it to be looking healthy and there's an energy of you being very like i'm hearing inviting so i don't know if that's the vibe that you're going for but people are noticing there's this physical glow up that you're having before the end of the year spirit what is happening here with my group fours before the end of the year what is this venus energy about for them what is happening for my group fours before the end of the year, spirit? Okay, first card is the Seven of Swords reversed. What is happening for my group fours before the end of the year? We also have the Page of Cups coming out upright. What is happening for my group fours before the end of the year? We have the chariot reversed. And we have the seven of pentacles upright. At the back of the deck is the king of swords reversed. So these are some pretty big themes to go through before the end of the year. I love how I keep bringing that up before the end of the year. Before the end of the year. <laughs> I think it's important to note that we do have a court card here. So your love seems to be coming from a specific source as well as a community. And I do think for it to be the page of cups, you guys are either going to have a soft spot for somebody like this is could be a platonic connection who you and this person get a lot out of spending time with each other. You enjoy time with each other. It's very fun. There's an um, sensuality there. Like you both feel like you're really taking care of yourselves. You both may like practice self-care together too. If this, if this is a friend, I'm seeing like lip gloss, dewy skin, you know, really done brows. Um, like the brows are just thriving. The hair is thriving. Like, there is this energy here of, even if that's not your aesthetic, it's to me a representation of just covering all bases. So if this is a platonic friend, this is someone that makes you feel like your best self and they really boost the way that you see yourself. But for a lot of you, this is a love interest. And I do think that the feelings that you have for this person will be quite sweet. I don't think that this will lead to a relationship, but before the end of the year, there is this energy of you two having a lot of fun together, flirting a lot, um, and really enjoying those early stages of a connection, that honeymoon period, where you're kind of getting to know each other, you know, you're going on some fun dates, and everything is a little bit novel and romantic because you, you feel like you're in a fun 2000s rom-com. That's what this kind of feels like. 
So I think with the Page of Cups being here, a major theme here is about being able to have a more carefree approach to this area of your life. If you're already in a connection, sweet soul, and you're really not looking for more um, for anything else, you're monogamous, satisfied, I do think that you're still developing a newer connection here with somebody who brings out a fun side to yourself, a flirty side to yourself, a more carefree version, which would arguably even be a more childish version of you because there is an en energy here of having lowered inhibitions a little bit and just having fun without worrying about what it looks like to other people and laughing in the streets really loud because you think that it's funny, you know, not because you're trying to, but to other people, you know, there's like, yeah, I'm feeling like a lot of judgment and assumptions. So <clears throat> it may have been that this person brings out a version of you that you don't feel comfortable being by yourself because you assume that people are judging you. You assume that people are thinking badly of, of you. I do want to say I am picking up on jealousy and a little bit of that evil eye envy. So if you are getting a vibe, protect yourself, you know, do what you can to distance yourself from people who wish bad upon you. Um, but I think that maybe an ex is still lingering for this group and is still keeping tabs on this group as well. I do think that the page of cups serves another purpose for you, sweet soul. So I'm not ready to move on yet. I see this page of cups as a theme of you guys having somebody come forward with a really sweet message. And for some of you, this sweet message is also in the form of an apology. If this person has anything to apologize for, you're receiving them really, really well. So this isn't somebody who you don't want to hear from. If this does apply to you, this is an apology that would rekindle communication and it would open up a wonderful opportunity for the two of you to start to see each other more regularly. You would welcome it. You wouldn't shun this person away. You wouldn't be disgusted to hear from them again. It wouldn't be debilitating or anxiety ridden. Like it would be a welcomed message and you would receive it openly. So that's the other message I'm seeing with the Page of Cups. I'm going to clarify now to see if there's anything that I've missed with that card before we move forward. For my group fours, please, Spirit. Have I missed anything with this Page of Cups? Is there anything else you can tell us? Okay, the King of Pentacles. That's interesting. What are we feeling here, Spirit? I think this is more about what kind of person this is. You guys may be getting spoiled before the end of the year. Look at that at the back of the deck, the Queen of Pentacles reversed. This is somebody who really wants to spend. Like, I'm sorry, there are other ways to represent the Pentacles. This, this King of Pentacles has a whole handful of coins and their crown is just these diamonds or these gems with dollar signs in them so i think you guys are getting spoiled before the end of the year this could be in a relationship that you're manifesting or a dynamic that you're manifesting this person is really here to take care of you and they're taking care of you in a material sense sweet soul they also have a very compassionate side to them in this but some of you guys are getting pampered I don't want to say spoiled because I, the more I say it, the more I feel like it has a negative connotation. I don't mean that in a bad way, but I do pick up on evil eye in this group. So just be careful about that. I think a lot of people are keeping up with you behind the scenes, wanting to see what you're doing. There is this assumption that you're living your best life. Like people are looking over at your profiles. If you have public profiles or they're hearing things about you through the grapevine, even your close circle your family, your friends, they're like, man, group four is living the best lifestyle. I think you have somebody here who you have sweet feelings for, who is very much wanting to invest in you. They want to spend money on you. They want to have you trust them. It feels like it's like a trust thing, but it's also their love language. So I do think somebody could be gifting you perfume 
or they could be spending money on an expensive experience because they want to do that with you. Um, the other thing I'm seeing is like physical things. It really depends on what you like, but I can see someone paying for your nails to be done. I can see a reference here as well to like shoes or handbags if that's what you're into. Spirit, who is this Page of Cups person to my viewer? Oh, we've got a few cards. I'm going to take this one because it's the one that flipped first. We have the Seven of Wands. This is somebody who may have a lot of insecurities themselves. And so they really appreciate the attention that you give them. They really enjoy Page of Cups, their interactions with you. They feel quite strongly for you. I'm not going to lie. Like <laughs> this person feels very strongly for you. How does my viewer feel for them? They come across as older than you as well. I don't know if I said that. The King of Wands. You're very attracted to this person too. You are excitable. I think they're attractive, but I also think that you do enjoy what they're able to give you. You're excited about what a future with them could look like. Um, they're also exciting because they're different. This person could be a foreigner. Or they could just be very different to what you've dealt with recently when it comes to these kinds of connections. Um, there's a maturity here. I think that for most of you, this person is older than you. But we got the Page of Cups twice. So it's probably one extreme or the other. They're either years older than you or they're years younger than you. I don't see any in between here. In terms of zodiac signs, I am seeing Capricorn. I am also seeing, I want to say Aries, but I also see Cancer. A lot of cardinal energy, Aries, Capricorn and Cancer. And that may not be their sun sign too because it's their love language. So it could be their moon sign or their Venus because it's that love language connection. But there is mutual desire here to expand. So this person is definitely somebody that you trust. I think it's just coming through as like, they have to like win you over um, because they're coming through as a page of cups, even though you see them as the king of wands, there is this desire to want something with them. Like you want a future, you want expansion, you want the excitement, you want the chemistry, the passion, you're very physically attracted to them. Um, you enjoy the way that they take care of you and they enjoy taking care of you. But it all comes back to this page of cups. The nature of the relationship is very fun. It's very playful. It's lighthearted. Even though their energy is intense and the way that you feel about them can come through is very intense because of the passion. It's like the nature of the connection has to be fun. It can't be anything too serious. So that's interesting. I don't think there's any advice there. I think that this is an intuitive process. And I think this is probably a relationship that you may need to protect from other people. If it works for the two of you, that's fine. But I feel like there are other people in your life who don't understand this. And there are other people in your life who are probably jealous of this dynamic, if I'm honest, because I was picking up on evil eye over here. So if anything, this is a very special connection for you and for this person, but other people don't seem to understand it. So let's move forward. I do want to have a look at this seven of swords next. Intuitively, I feel this card is talking about unmasking. There is an energy here before the end of 2024 of you guys hearing some sort of truth that somebody tried to keep from you. Now, I do think that you guys are also keeping secrets. I think there are certain things that you're doing that you don't want everybody to know. And it could be as simple as, you know, you're just not putting everything out there as much as you used to. You're not posting publicly as much as you used to, or you're just not advertising certain areas of your life. And I do think with the Seven of Swords reverse, something that you may have wanted to keep a secret is going to be aired. Once it comes out, it actually feels empowering, if I'm honest. It feels a little bit like a relief because now instead of carrying that burden or carrying that secret as a burden, it's up in the air. It's out in the open 
And instead of people assuming what's happening, they know now what's happening. And you can focus on other things. The Seven of Swords feels like a empowering process for you. But I think that the secret isn't your own to keep. There's somebody else involved in the secret. And that's why it becomes complicated. Spirit, what is the Seven of Swords about for my viewer? What is the Seven of Swords about for my viewer? We have the Three of Cups. Yeah, I'm hearing an affair for some of you, not all of you. Somebody could be having an affair. Queen of Swords, Afraid of Judgment, Seven of Cups. We have choices though. So this is definitely a battle of the wills. I do think that some big personalities are not going to be happy with this information. I think there's more than two people involved in this situation. And I think that there is a fe fear of judgment with the Queen of Swords, a fear of gossiping, a fear of people having opinions about something that they shouldn't even know about. So really the Seven of Swords, the reason why this thing is being unearthed and why the truth is coming to the light is so that we know that we have choices. We know that we have options. I think you guys may be hearing certain stories from people around you that are going to change the way that you see this situation because what it, when it was a secret nobody was able to talk about it nobody was able to know what other people were going through but now that we're airing it out now that we're all talking about it we can all exchange stories and we can understand what our options are moving forward there's a sense of camaraderie here so I wouldn't be surprised if by talking more about something that you once felt ashamed about or you once felt like you had to keep secret, you're going to build a stronger friendship with other people because not only have they been through a similar thing or they went through the exact same thing, but there's also this support of it gets better. And by understanding each other's stories, we get a better view of how everything is happening. And that's ultimately what the Queen of Swords is about. Yes, it can be a card that makes us feel like we're under a microscope. But from our perspective, the Queen of Swords is about getting a bigger view, a bird's eye view of the situation, taking a step back and looking at that higher perspective so that we're not tunneled visioned and we're not in the dark anymore. If you guys have been very confused, I think that that confusion may persist, but only because now, instead of feeling confused about what's real, what's not real, you're going to be confused about, okay, so I have options now, what do I do? So there's, that's why it feels empowering, because now you're informed and you know that you have options. You just have to choose which of those options you want to do. And I do think that you will have support through this process. I think for the most part, sweet souls, like you're surrounded by love group four. There are so many people who just want to support you, who want to be there for you. So whatever happens with this, once it comes to the light, there is a beautiful community of people here to guide you through that process or to help support you through that process so that you feel like you have people standing by your side as you put the pieces together. So that's what I'm seeing with the Seven of Swords as a theme before the end of the year. Let us have a look at this chariot energy now. For me, I feel like this chariot energy is talking about you feeling like you may have lost the determination to do things that you once felt motivated to do. And the way that it's coming through is that you may have had a specific goal that you started this year hoping to achieve. And as the years gone by, now that we're in June and as the year continues to progress, it may look very unlikely that you will achieve this goal. And you may start to feel very disheartened by the lack of progress. The chariot is also a feeling of fear. Look at that. We have the chariot at the back of the deck now. There's also a feeling of fear overtaking to the point where we just can't summon and muster that courage, that determination without 
feeling like we're blinded by our greatest fears. So I do want to have a look at what this situation is because I see that you're very much in this energy of receiving love and giving love. So I'm curious to see what isn't moving forward for you and why you feel so stuck. What is this chariot energy about spirit for my viewer? We have the ace of pentacles reversed. You guys are feeling pressures to do something that you're not really ready to do. You may be comparing yourself to um, a societal ideal. Or you may have parents who are saying, like, when are you going to do this? When are you going to do that? Come on, you're not getting any younger. Yeah, there seems to be a mother figure here. Like, we want these things too, but it's just not happening in our planning. This could be uh, the race to start a family as well. You guys may feel like your biological clock is ticking. And it could feel like there's just been a lot of things out of your control that have caused setbacks and delays. This is a physical goal. So whatever this is, it has like a physical, tangible outcome. The physical birth of a child, for example. The physical acquisition of property. The physical... It could also have to do with work and money. I don't know how to describe that though in a physical... Um, but this goal is very tangible and with the ace of pentacles reversed, I don't know what's going on with some people in your life, sweet souls, maybe because you give them so much power with this Venus energy, you have so much love for them that they have such strong opinions about you, but I'm almost feeling like there's a family member here who's like, your your lifestyle is selfish like why don't you just settle down already why haven't you calmed down when i was your age i wasn't doing any of this you guys may have somebody saying that to you or you may feel that it may not be a verbalization of those words but you may feel that some people have that opinion of you the truth is with the ace of pentacles reversed and the tower reversed y'all are being very hard on yourselves I think with the chariot reversed, whatever isn't going through here is definitely out of your control. I don't think you're doing anything wrong. I think you're trying to distract yourself from delays because the tower is not something we can control. And there seems to be collateral here over these unexpected tangents that life has thrown your way that you're still trying to cope with. You're still trying to heal from or you're still trying to figure out how to move forward from those moments, those sudden changes, those unexpected delays, unexpected shifts. I do think with the chariot here, there's just going to be a moment towards the end of the year where you're really reflecting on some sort of tangible goal that you wanted for yourself. And it has to do with um, a lifestyle or a heartfelt desire that impacts your tangible world. And as much as you want this, it's just not coming together the way that you had expected. And you're really trying to figure out why. You are blaming yourself a little bit. You may think that other people are blaming you or judging you for this, but really with the Queen of Cups upright, this is another moment where we exercise that compassion for self and where we really draw in that support crew to remind us that we're not bad people. We're doing the best that we can with the information we have and with the tools we're equipped with. And really, there's something here, divine timing wise, that hasn't worked out. So I do think with the chariot reverse, you have a fear that this is never going to happen. And I don't think that that's true. I just think that it isn't happening this year. So with the Queen of Cups upright, your intuition is trying to help you calm that chaos. And your intuition is going to guide you towards the people who can help you calm that chaos, the supportive people that you should be relying on as well. And I do think that your intuition is trying to show you that this is happening for a reason. Even if we don't fully understand that reason yet, you guys navigate that feeling, that situation of feeling like, why hasn't this happened yet? What's going wrong? You navigate it with a lot of compassion for self. That's the way out. Having a lot of compassion for self, a lot of empathy for self. And through there, 
your third eye is also trying to show you how this is all coming together so that's what i'm seeing with the chariot energy let's have a look at that seven of pentacles now i do believe that this seven of pentacles being upright is a sign of making some sort of progress and where you feel like this area of your life isn't moving forward you are going to experience growth in another aspect of your life spirit what is this growth about you got a lot of sevens too so this is really a powerful end to the year the end of this year is is about you guys coming back into alignment the world card reverse the eight of pentacles reverse and the knight of cups i honestly see you building a pretty meaningful connection i do think with the knight of cups being here that this is more love based but it changes your lifestyle you will have a relationship in your life that is really, I think it's this page of cups. Is it this page of cups, Spirit? We have the high priestess, most likely, yes. If it resonates, you guys may be dating multiple people before the end of the year. And this page of cups is a stepping stone to meeting this knight of cups. Um, but by the end of the year, there will be a relationship in your life who opens up this whole other world to you. In terms of lifestyle makes you want to change the way that you live makes you want to change the way that you invest the way that you make money it makes you want to change your habits your lifestyle you, you may even decide to move for this person it could be a long distance connection or this person may travel quite a lot so right at the end of the year with the Knight of Cups upright, we realize that we've grown something quite significant in this relationship. We've made a lot of progress with this person and we start to feel like some of the answers, you know, some of the things that haven't gone according to plan. Sorry, I'm just wiping my nose. Had to happen that way or we wouldn't have met this person. And I'll be honest, this person feels pretty special. But they also feel like they're encouraging you to do something that you weren't really ready to do. So you have some sort of choice here at the end of the year. As you get to know this person better, as you invest more time and energy into them, you're trying to figure out how much further do I want to take this? Is there a happy ending here? With the world card reverse, the seven of pentacles does feel like an energy of closure but it's ironic because i feel like this person is helping you understand why other aspects of your life had to work out the way that they did i don't think the closure is with them but them being in your life helps you appreciate well i wouldn't have met you if i continued to do this i wouldn't have met you if that went ahead i wouldn't have met you if i was still in that job i wouldn't have met you if i was still in that relationship I wouldn't have met you if I hadn't lost that bid on that house. Whatever it is, it's like the year ends with this serendipitous feeling of like, wow, so you're the loose end. <laughs> you're the reason why I couldn't leave yet or why I couldn't get into that specific place that I wanted to go. Spirit, is there anything else they need to know about the Seven of Pentacles? We have the page of cups and the knight of swords oh cute honestly i think you're going to finish this energy this year with an energy of making some pretty significant moments with this person and feeling like you have a future together this person may even try to make positive changes to your lifestyle by offering you that monetary support they may be trying to build a home with you. They may be trying to build a business with you, a career with you. This person may have a business that they're wanting to bring you into to help you feel more secure in that connection with them. This person is making romantic gestures and taking fast action to show you how they truly feel about you. And I don't think that they're good at communicating their feelings because they keep showing up as a page of cups, as someone who has pretty light-hearted ways or simple ways of talking about love and communicating about their feelings but that doesn't mean that they don't care 
I just think that this person's love language is more acts of service or gifts or um, they probably prefer to spend quality time with you. That's their way of showing you they care about you. So I really think that the last theme for this year is seeing progress in this area of your life and being able to compare that to the lack of progress in other areas or the setbacks in other areas. Um, the only other thing I want to say is that this person does feel like they have good intentions. I think that you're a little bit skeptical about anything <laughs> that doesn't feel right. Um, there seems to be a concern about distance. There seems to be a concern about moving too quickly. And there seems to be a concern again about what other people are going to think in this situation. But I honestly think that you and this connection will move forward exactly as it is meant to. It may move quickly, but sweet soul, you have a pretty good head on your shoulders. Not only is this your journey, but it moves at the pace that you allow it to. And for the most part, I see you showing up in all of these themes as a very intuitive, empathetic, understanding, kind person who is really focusing on trying to live their life with meaning for self. You really want to show up as your biggest supporter and you're doing what you can to attract these beautiful opportunities by feeding that love into self first and foremost. So, I mean, I see a lot of positives. Group four, I think that you're going to finish this year. Not me yawning. Sorry, that might be a sign that we're done. But I think you're going to finish this year feeling pretty good about where your life is headed. It's just not what you originally prepared for. It's not what you originally expected. And this person is really trying to show you how they want you in their world and how they can make it work with you. So that's what I have for you. I'm going to end your YouTube reading here, sweet souls. That is the rest of 2024 for you. I'm going to go into the extended reading now where we will do that full breakdown to get more specific. I'm going to be doing that six card spread where we will be having a look at your love life, your money slash finances, your home life, your families, your friendships and you. And as I said in the beginning, we're going to be looking at opportunities and challenges in each of those six aspects of your life all before the end of 2024. That is the goal. If that extended reading sounds like something that you would like to have, and especially if the first part of this reading did resonate, the link to the extended readings is in the description box. Remember, if you're returning or heads up if you're new, that is going to take you to my website where I host many extended readings. So when you click on the link, please make sure that you're looking for the right reading before you purchase it. Let the page load. If you're all on there at once, sometimes the website has a little bit of a meltdown and is like, ah, so let it load for you. And then once you're at checkout, triple check the right group is in your basket, your cart before you pay anything. Okay. Make sure you've selected group four of the before the end of 2024 reading that I posted on YouTube in June 2024. With that being said, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for trusting me with your messages, for letting me read for you today. It is a pleasure to have you group four. If this is where we're parting ways, thank you so much for all your energy, your time and your support. I wish you peace, love, happiness, union with your soulmate. Look out. Okay, that was not what I meant to say. Um, wow, get it. Union with your soulmate. Let's throw that in there. Hell yeah. I wish you peace, love, prosperity, happiness, abundance, success, health, wealth, and joy on your journey ahead until we meet again. Bye.